Welcome to a very long video, potentially. Um, or a very short, long video. I don't know. Maybe it's like this up into parts. But I'm doing this very impulsively. I don't even have the music set up right now. Which would be funny if I like I'm premiering this because then that adds a slight bit of like credibility to what I'm making. But essentially, what this is is a attempt to make a semi-comprehensive guide to the GSC lead metagame. And I I have no qualms about saying I'm gonna miss a couple Snorlax sets that you can run in the lead slot. I don't care. There's a lot of Snorlax that you can run in this tier. And pretty much any of them can get stuck in the lead slot. So, uh, most defining lead in the metagame is Snorlax. The Snorlax set, you, that's just, just like, curse talk. Can be anything. You can go curse lax, any of the variations. EQ, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, Thunder, Surf, Ice Beam. I'm missing any? I don't know. EQ. I've seen Dynamic Punch in the lead slot once. Don't do that one. That one's not good, though. It can even be a uh, curse body slam EQ self destruct. It can be a uh, curse lovely kiss body slam or double edge EQ. It can be a uh, curse self destruct lovely kiss body slam. It can be all sorts of crap. A uh, curse self destruct body slam double edge. Not body slam double edge. Body slam lovely kiss. Um, it like bait like pretends like it's. Curse, Body Slam, Lovely Kiss, Rest, and it pretends like it doesn't, so it's pretend like, you, instead of resting, you blow up on something, and then it, like, also can pretend it cur it's Curse EQ sometimes, uh, so that you don't get Gengar, because <laughs> blowing up into Gengar really sucks. Uh, you can be Rest Talk, because you deal with Jinx, any of the variations. Instead of Curse, it can be Ice Beam, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, I would not recommend Fire Blast, Thunder, Surf, uh all of those yeah it can be drum lax it can be usually lovely cat lovely kiss drum lax or just like a rest drum lax um which can be return don't really not really double edge it can be uh like fire move here it can be electric move all at attacker this set except body slam sometimes or fire blast sometimes or surf sometimes and like Lovely kiss on this set sometimes, so it's like three attacks. Lovely kiss, like body slam, uh, EQ, lovely kiss, explosion, self destruct. Um, it can be toxic, it's that's this set. It can be, um, belly drum protect stuff. It can be lovely kiss, belly drum stuff. It's all sorts of snorlaxes can be run in the lead slot. Zapdos stuff, um. I have Magnet on here. Yeah, so this is this is um, leftovers. Is where is yeah ninety percent nine ninety nine percent of them. Magnet is technically an option, but it's not particularly great. Thunder Thunderbolt, a uh, hidden power choice, hidden power water, hidden power ice. You can have all sorts of Zapdos sets, uh, just like from standard Sleep Talk to Thunder Wave stuff to Whirlwind stuff to three attacks stuff with like drill pack um or two electric stabs or even four attacks two electric stabs hidden power water drill pack that's a decent set that one often runs magnet whirlwind all sorts of stuff you can be protect zapdos too like could be a lot of things in the lead slot but most likely you're seeing sleep talk um now i've ran down the sets of what these do but i'm realizing now that like i should explain uh, what each of the sets do. So, Snorlax is just the best Pokemon in the tier. It's a great lead. It, uh, wins the lead matchup on Zapdos and Raikou. If it has Sleep Talk, it sleep absorbs from all of the sleepers. And it can just start off the game with, like, early curses. Uh, against Zapdos, the standard play is to click Curse. And then against Cloyster, you can either keep cursing or you can start double-edging. 
uh, once it switches to Cloyster against Cloyster immediately, you can curse or double edge, or just go to Zapdos, like go to your electric. Um, depends really on your set. Sleep Talk can stay in against all the sleep leads. Uh, you don't want to get thiefed though. You have to be wary of that. If you're Thunder Snorlax, uh, then against Cloyster or uh, Electric leads, you often just go for Thunder turn one and aim for a Cloyster switching in. Because if you get the Para, then you can kill with Double Edge afterwards. That's the idea behind it. Um, yeah, that's what Thunder Lax does in the lead slot. You can also be Lovely Kiss Lax in the lead slot, which if you Lovely Kiss turn one against a Zapdos, you're trying to Lovely Kiss a... Like, often you're trying to Lovely Kiss a Cloyster switch in, and just deny them spikes. And then, like... The self-destruct lax is just like, like curse self-destruct lax is just like curse up on Zapdos, break through Cloyster, and then boom on something. There's just like all sorts of stuff that you can do with lax. It's incredibly challenging to be comprehensive about all lax sets. So, uh, Zapdos is the biggest deterrent to Cloyster getting early spikes, because Cloyster just gets early spikes on Lax. Um, basically for free, unless it's a Lax set that punishes Cloyster like Lovely Kiss or Thunder. Um, yeah, Cloyster usually either responds it like Zapdos's or opposing Cloyster's switch in turn one to it. Cloyster on Cloyster. Usually they all toxic each other because a toxic cloister allows Golem to spin on it. Um, but yeah, Zapdos deters cloister. It sleep absorbs from Nido King. It well, <laughs> it has a fun time against Counter Nido King. But uh, sleep absorbs from Nido King. It sleep absorbs from Eggy. But it's just a generally good per Pokemon to start the game off. That's what the Electric leads and the Snorlax leads do. They are these, these leads are l loosely ordered in their uh, prevalence. In uh, their prevalence, like how often you see them, and or their viability. Raikou should be up higher. I mean, Needle King and Raikou. It depends on like the tournament, which ones used more. Um, we'll get to that lax set in a minute. So, Nido King, it's a thiefer. It's thief sleep stuff. Um, just get a thief off and lovely kiss something in EQ and Ice Beam. Sometimes thunder over Ice Beam, but then you're completely walled by. Uh, then you're completely, like, blanked by Zapdos, but as it is, you're walled by Cloyster. That's why lovely kiss three attacks exists. Nido King. Uh,. Without thief can do counter stuff Depending on if you want to I think it's like It's like 20 spadef 18 Like 20 spadef EVs like 10 I'm, I'm just spitballing you have to lower you have to get almost no spadef EVs and almost no spadef DVs, which also lowers your special attack EVs and DVs, to get an Oko on Zapdos with counter. So most counter Nido Kings go for an Ice Beam and then counter the Zapdos. Because you can counter Hidden Power in this generation, so it's a Zapdos lure. Because Zapdos is the most, is like, yeah, it is the most common response to the King's sleep. Of course, you don't love, you, like, Lax sleep absorbs from you. And countering Lax is less effective at killing Lax than countering Raikou. I mean, Raikou and Zapdos, but Raikou, you can just EQ. Anyhow, I'm rambling. That's what Nido King does. It is the first of the sleep and thief leads that we'll give out. Uh, most leads fall into a couple, one of a couple of categories. Spikes, Cloyster, Smeargle, Fori. Uh, sleep, Nido King, Jinx, Executor... Uh, Venusaur, some variants of a lax, uh, just good Pokemon leads with a good matchup spread. 
Snorlax, Zapdos, a certain mod we'll get to later that's becoming more of a new addition to the lead metagame. At least I think it's a new addition. Uh, I don't remember which player has been pioneering it, but it's very interesting. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, Thief leads, and lastly are the Baton Pass shenanigans. So, Raikou, it's the exact same idea as, um... Just let me look at the set. Um, yeah, so, it's Sleep Talk or Roar. You just use Sleep Talk, Sleep Talk. I mean, Roar is not particularly great. Um, let's see. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, it's like a second, it's like a Zapdos lead, except... Uh, you don't sleep absorb Mido King, but you do sleep absorb Jinx. Um, if you're Rust Talk, of course. If you're Roar, you're the best anti cheese mon. Pretty, yeah, like one of, Roar or Raikou is pretty much like the best anti cheese mon <laughs> that we got in the tier. But it is really abusable. So it's fallen out of favor. And there's other anti cheese options like Good Play and Cursey Q Lax. And Cloyster. Just Cloyster's existence kind of invalidates a lot of stuff. Or a lot of dumb play. Um, so that's... I'm not loving this music. It's a little too chill. So, that's what Raikou does. Essentially, it's just a good mon. It also beats Zapdos in the lead matchup. Which is quite nice. Uh, it does worse against Laxo, because it doesn't hit as hard, and takes more damage. Mm, let's go to the epic music. Or just, like, the battle music. Um, Miracle Berry Snorlax. This is very uncommon. You don't see this often. But Miracle Berry Lovely Kiss, sleep absorbs from all of the sleepers, wakes from Miracle Berry, and then Lovely Kisses them back, and then you can double-edge self like you can just like miracle berry rest but that's not really a, what you want to go for often you can be like self-destruct um could be belly drum instead of curse belly drum self-destruct lax is something we've been seeing a little more recently and it's just like i'm gonna do some heavy damage with my returns and body slams and then i'm gonna blow something up and it's gonna be like that is the strongest attack in the tier hands down destroys things. So, next up, we have uh, Miracle Berry Cloister, which is found on... Oh, I forgot to go over the uh, other Cloister set that you can use. So, Miracle Berry Cloister is essentially just the same thing, except it takes sleep. Um, yeah. It's really bemoans the lack of leftovers uh, in making the Cloyster actually have a mid-game presence, and it has a harder time against opposing HP Electric Cloyster, just as a note, like, you do get to it KO'd without lefties. Um, but yeah, it's just trying to get spikes up, and then I wouldn't entirely recommend Clamp Screech on this thing as much as I would on the other one, but yes, Cloyster can run Spikes, Clamp, Screech, Explosion. Sometimes you run uh, Clamp, Surf, Explosion, but usually Screech is better because uh, Snorlax will just curse up on you often, and you spike, so it gets plus one or plus two because uh, the theory behind Clamp, Cloyster. Yeah, like ideally you just uh, it's spike up, then you clamp the Snorlax to force it to stay in, and then you screech it, and by now it's probably double edging you, uh, so you'll be just barely living, depending on how many curses it's got, which is why I like leftovers, because it really means that you're not getting murdered by high rules, and then you like you screech it so its defenses are lowered and then you blow it up. Ice Beam is just another way to hit Zapdos, and it's stab, and maybe you gotta freeze hidden power electric is for opposing cloister. So you win that 1v1 easier. Gengar stuff can be Hypnosis, 2 attacks, Explosion, well 3 attacks, uh, can be Thief, Hypnosis, plus 1, like 1 attack, Destiny Bond or Explosion, all sorts of stuff. Could just be Thief, not Hypnosis. Gengar is not 
a common lead. There are usually better leads to go for, but if you see it in the lead slot, assume Hypnosis. Fori, similar idea as Cloyster, except it takes his Thunder from Electrics, but you do have to watch out for Flamethrower Lack, not Flamethrower, Fire Blast Lacks, because you die to Fire Blast. Um, doesn't, like, runs from all the sleep leads, loses to all the sleep leads, but Flame, uh, Fire Lacks is really declining in use recently, so you can usually safely just spike up on it and assume not a uh, fire move. The stuff is, like, you can just be Toxic Protect, you can have an attack Giga Drain to try and beat, like, HP Fire beats Opposing Forest, Giga Drain helps against Cloyster and Golem, HP Ghost hits Gengar. And if you're at full health, you win the one, like, the 1v1 against a T-Bolt and Gengar. Which is nice. Um, yeah. Then we have Eggy. The first Eggy that we're going to look at is it can be Leftovers or Miracle Berry. Miracle Berry takes the sleep move from, like, uh, opposing, like, a Jinx. If it doesn't go for Ice Beam, uh, it takes the sleep move from Smeargle. Like, any faster sleeper it takes the sleep move from, and then it can sleep him back. Or it can be Stun Spore stuff in the lead slot. Uh, Psychic Giga Drain can be Double Powder, and then boom. It's a two-for-one mod. All the idea behind these sleepers is to just eliminate one of the mods with sleep on your opponent's team at early game. Like, why not get your free pseudo-kill, because it's an RBY, so it's not really a kill, um, as fast as you can. Then Jinx can also, uh, Eggy can also do Thief stuff. So, uh, Thief, one attack, a boom, a powder move. You can technically do four attacks, Eggy, in the lead slot, but, like, that's usually a better late game mod. So, powder stuff. Because you stun Spore Zapdos trying to switch in to absorb your sleep move. Or you Thief a Raikou that does that. Stuff like that. Thief leads almost always go for Thief turn one. Like, nearly always. Uh, Jinx. Tag. I have never met Ice Blizzard here as a technical option. It's just fun. It hits harder than Zapdos' Thunder, which is nice. But uh, you're almost never going to see that unless BKC is playing. So Lovely Kiss is going to be on every Jinx. And then Ice Beam is on practically every Jinx. Uh, but it should be on every Jinx in the lead slot. Then Psychic can be... It can be Psychic, Sub, Nightmare, Thief stuff. That's what this Jinx is. Yeah, so it's a sleep... Psychically, it's a sleep thief lead. Umbreon, mean look shenanigans. Uh, mean look baton pass, and just try and win the game. And then there's different moves to facilitate that, like sand attack, toxic stall, charm. Um, a lot of good players will baton pass turn one with their Umbreon rather than clicking mean look. Because they know a phaser is coming in. Because anyone decent that sees an Umbreon in the lead slot knows it's mean look. Porygon 2 is a technical lead. Uh, also, Jinx is a very common lead. Most of these are not. Technical difficulties aside, let's get back to the recording. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I have to cut out, but I... Oh well. Porygon 2. Thunder Wave Electrics. Like, you click Thunder Wave, you run from Sleepers, and that's what this mod does. It's not really a lead, but it is something that can be led. Porygon 2 is not particularly common. Uh, it's your choice of Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Thunder, or Return Double Edge. I think Double Edge Ice Beam is by far the best. But you're always seeing, seeing Thunder Wave and Recover on this set. No curse stuff in the lead slot. Smeargle. This mod, I'm not covering all possible sets, because that's not really particularly possible. Um, yeah, because it has way too many moves. So, essentially, it performs one of two roles. As a sleep and end spiker, uh, that maybe does something else, but usually just sleeps and spikes. Or as a baton passer. Uh, your choices here, like, Sacred Fire and Present... Our potential attacking option, Sacred Fire, really hits Fori pretty hard. Well, it does damage to Fori and burn fishing. Uh, Destiny Bond, maybe you get a kill out of your Smeargle. Baton Pass, so you can Baton Pass a boost. 
Um, or maybe scout a switch. Yeah, so you can do a bunch of different boosts on this thing. SD, belly drum, agility. Present is a really glitchy move, but essentially it calculates damage based off of type, so it is, like, primary type, or maybe it's secondary type. Um, but it's quadruple resisted by any normal, re like, normal resist. Like, instead of being a double, like, half damage is a quarter damage, and also it can sometimes heal your opponent. It's really bizarre, but it can do, like, 80% to an Umbreon. Which is quite nice. Um, it really just depends on what you hit with it. And it's really complicated, so look up present mechanics. And the damage calculator does not work properly for it. Or you can do mean look pass, and pass to something that's gonna try and win the game right there. Spiderweb is the exact same thing as mean look, except it's cooler. So that's what Smeargle does. Usually leads off uh, the really fast-paced baton pass stuff. Also known as cheesy teams. <laughs> Um, so it runs Miracle Berry just so it can't get slept. Now, Paralysis Cure Berry Smeargle is a Smeargle we've been seeing pop up recently to flip some lead matchups on its head. The previous Smeargle against a Thief Sleep Mon that's faster than it would get its Miracle Berry thieved and then it would either spike or spore, but if it spores, the other Mon wakes up because it has, it has Smeargle's Miracle Berry, and then it can put Smeargle to sleep. But, Paralysis Cure here, Berry Smeargle can just click Spore Turn 1 against those Mons. They Thief its Paralysis Cure Berry because they think it's Miracle Berry so they don't sleep into you. And they get Paralysis Cure Berry so they get slept. And it this still has the effects of not getting paralyzed by Thunder. So that's the idea behind Paralysis Curaberry Smeargle. Runs the exact same sets that uh, Miracle Berry does. Houndoom, not a established lead, but in theory, it can have it has like pretty much the most polarizing matchup spread out of any mod. If you meet a Gengar, mm, uh, maybe a Mischievous, like a rogue Mischievous on why would you? I don't know. It's not a good lead, but I'm including it in this video anyways. Uh, a Jinx, an Eggy, yeah, one of those mods, the lead psychics, or a uh, ghost. Then Houndoom, uh, just if you play it right, if you get your Pursuit Crunch reads right, it just takes them out of the game, and usually uh, they sleep you, they can try and sleep you, and then you uh, burn your Miracle Berry so that you can thieve something else later, or you can just run counter. Uh, Fire Blast does a pretty decent chunk into Cloister in case you want to stay in Pummelet. We can actually look at the damage calcs. Don't mind Haunter in here. Versus Cloy. Yeah, see, uh, Fire Blast is just a guaranteed to a KO. You can Crunch Fire Blast or you can Fire Blast Pursuit, which is what is probably best. Because you are faster. So I do suppose you win the Cloister lead matchup if they try and spike on you. Missy, Mean Look Parish Song. Uh, this can, pain split can be Confuse Ray or Thunder. Because if you want to hit Skarmory, the phaser. Because most players are going to uh, switch their phaser straight into Missy. Because once they see lead Missy, they're like, oh, I know it's Mean Look Parish Song stuff. So that's why I don't think it's a good lead. Is It's just too well known. Venu, Sleep Powder, um, Swords Dance, it can be special with Growth, HP Ice, Giga Drain, or Swords Dance, Body Slammer, uh, Double Edge, Giga Drain is the third move. You can also go Hidden Power Rock, but then you just change your, like you do a little bit better into Skarmory, but you still have a really hard time into, um, they give you a way, way harder time into the grounds. So that's what Venusaur does. It can also do some Leech Seed stuff in the lead slot, but you're probably seeing sleep. Victor Bell is not a mod in this tier. Like, you, no one uses it. In theory. But in theory, it can be used. As a Venusaur. That's a little bit stronger. And has Sludge Bomb, because Venusaur doesn't. And Sludge Bomb Giga Drain... 
it's not bad coverage. It's pressing against Skarmory and Steelix, but those are incredibly lureable mons. So you can definitely uh, make it work, and it's stronger than Venusaur. That's the draw, and has Sludge Bomb. So that's uh, the Houndoom and Victor Bell being included in this video are. Um, it's just my my it's a me thing, like I think they're usable leads, and I think that they have some merit in exploration. Hence, I am putting them in my video. Um, but we'll go over what's standard, what's not, in a minute, and some early lines you take into these mons. But first, we're gonna look at what lead Venusaur can do. A little bit of. Um, Lead Venusaur in action. This is uh, a video by Finchinator. And all the credits to him for recording this replay. But I think this is rather fantastic to illustrate a lot of things. This video could be a whole case study on a lot of things. Maybe I make a trap ball series on this. Shh, maybe you don't know what that is because I haven't released it yet. So clicks SD. Uh, it doesn't want to sleep into Raikou, but like it doesn't, it can't take too many more hidden powers. So it sleeps, and the other guy goes to a Skarmory, being like, oh, it's just SDs. Uh, and that's hidden power rock you're seeing. At least it probably is, because it hits Skarmory neutrally, and there's not a whole lot that does that. That you'd be running for SD. Yeah, and then just watch this Venusaur go ham. Fortunate, unfortunately, this is not my first time watching this video, so I can't give the initial reaction that I had. And as you can see, the uh, they're just letting this Venusaur go ham. Just tearing apart this team. Because GSC Sleep is really long. It can go up to six turns. Kind of like RBY, except it's, no, it's not as detrimental as RBY Sleep is. As you can see, Venus was taking out four mons, and it's about to take out another one. Now, we're not really analyzing the play in this game. We're just showing that, wow, look, Venusaur can do this, because it's a fun video to show. So now, I've slammed a ton of information down your throat. So let's take a moment and reflect on these mons. So, um, you, you know what the sets are ran, but we're gonna talk about turn one lines, because you should have turn one lines into at least, like, every lead category. The, uh, attacking leads, the, the good mon attacking leads, uh, the spikers, the setups of just Snorlax, um, like the setup mons, and the sleepers, and the thieves, and the baton pass. And you play into baton pass, like you, uh, you play into mean look almost identically to baton pass. Snorlax. Usually the turn response, turn one response, is to go to Cloyster and get out spikes on it. If Snorlax just starts clicking Curse a bunch of times, you can Toxic it and wear it down so that it has to rest, and then you can phase it out safely with your normal resistant phaser. Or maybe a Zapdos. Oh, well, one Zapdos. Um, 
if the lax reveals itself to be a set that is complete like mono lax walled by gengar or um thunder lax completely walled by like your Celix, then you can just go straight to your more resistant phaser and phase out lax on lax uh lead matchup you can both curse uh one person can double edge the other person could curse somewhat you could click body slam and try and para depends on how you want to play if you're taking down the beat down snorlax approach and then phase it out usually you want to double edge and if you if they double edge too you just keep double edging until you have to switch out to cloister or a phaser um or you can just go straight to cloister if they if you decide to get into a curse war with them have a backup plan and then figure out what their set is uh zapdos the so if you meet a lead as zapdos if your lead beats it then go for and do whatever your lead does maybe sleep it uh if you're an eggy consider turn one explosion as it stays in to absorb your sleep assume always sleep talk zapdos until otherwise proven if you're a cloister lead, you better have a prep. You better have prepped for electric leads. Um, if you're on Zapdos, you can stay in a Thunder or a Thunder Wave. You can go to your Zapdos check. If you're a Raikou, then you can safely Thunder or maybe you hidden power, predicting a um, electric immunity, or maybe you just switch, predicting a Snorlax. You could just go to your own cloister on Zapdos, but then you feel really sad if they try and thunder para like thunder you and they hit your cloister. Against Cloy, assume uh, Spike Surf Toxic Explosion always. You can just go directly to an electric on it. If you're not already one, you can just click Curse with Snorlax a bunch of times and then double edge it. Just be wary of getting into explosion range. The damage calculator is your friend. Um, if you're a sleeper that's faster than Cloyster, the default play, of course, is to sleep, right? But you can also just go for a move that hits Zapdos, which is the typical sleep talker that'll come in to absorb. And predict they won't, depending on where you are in the ladder, of course. But, um, yeah. And so that you try and hit the sleep talker that they're going to send in, which is either going to be Lax or Zapdos. Nido King, you send in your sleep absorber against. That's pretty much how you deal with it. Or you're faster and then you sleep it. Um, against Nido King, if you're so, if you see Zapdos on Nido King lead matchup, um, or a Nido King that doesn't immediately go lead off with Lovely Kiss, assume Thief. Uh, but if you're, so sorry, if a Nido King does not immediately lead off with Lovely Kiss, and, like, tries to, th and, yeah, it's just kind of weird, because, like, most Thief Nido Kings are going to lead off with Thief, but if you don't lead off with Lovely Kiss or Thief, you're probably Thief or Lovely Kiss. Well, it depends on what they go for. It's, like, it really, it's situational dependent, because, like, Nido King might just Ice Beam a Cloister predicting is Zapdos. Um, but if you have a Nido King and a Zapdos lead matchup, uh, both are at full health. And the Nido King turn one goes for Ice Beam. It has a chance of being counter. So that was all really circuitous, because, like, there's a lot of different reasons why the Nido King could just ice beam, be ice beaming you. Maybe they just want to hit the you so they can eventually break you down and lovely kiss something else. It, it all just depends. But, I mean, I guess you just play the tier, get familiar with your lines into these mons. But there is the existence of counter Nido King to bait Zapdos. So just be aware of that. Not saying you need to scout it every game or anything, but, eh. Raikou, uh, you treat it like a Zapdos lead, except it's weak to EQ and doesn't sleep absorb from Nido King. But does sleep absorb Jinx. Uh, unless it's Roarku, and then Roarku, you can, uh, go for... Depending, like, on the player playing, uh, most 
players, Smeargle players, or like lower ladder people that are uh, spamming baton pass stuff, so they'll probably sleep into your coup anyways, even though most coups should be sleep talk. So I wouldn't recommend roaring turn one against uh, Smeargle stuff. I'd recommend trying to preserve that Raikou. Uh, Miracle Berry Lax, we talked about how that plays. Miracle Berry Cloister, we talked about how that plays. Gengar, usually you just want to get your Thief Hypnosis off, whichever one you have, or both, and then preserve it for a late, like a later game, Destiny Bond or Boom. Fori, you want to get your spikes up. Uh, if you're playing the Gengar, you just pretty much try and sleep absorb it. It's nice if you have the Sleep Talk Raikou, because that absorbs pretty handily. Um, but be wary of getting your sleep absorber exploded on if it's just thief and it booms you. Fory spikes spin stuff. Like, it's gonna get spikes up, it's gonna take your Zapdos to the thunder. If you have flamethrower lax, consider not going for flamethrower because it doesn't kill. Maybe double edge it. Uh, or switch. And then later in the game flamethrower it when it's in range if your fire blocks lacks go for that burn that for you to a crisp for is almost always clicking spikes turn one or switching out like that's what it does uh if you're a sleeper assume a uh, sleep talker is coming in eggy you, this is the first of the sleep leads other than gengar we're getting into if you see a jinx you kind of get sad unless you're miracle berry then you can sleep powder into it unless they're sub which would be rather unfortunate uh and they sub turn one which is a really decent play because there's a psychic and you're immune to giga drain behind a sub that's a thing in gsc um if you're four attacks of course you don't stay in that's the only set that would really have hp fire unless you're like giga fire but yeah you the idea behind the Eggy is it's got decent defensive utility and it's a sleep boom. So you want to, if turn one isn't the opportunity to get your sleep off and set up for your boom, then you can be patient and get your sleep off later down the line. Maybe sleep a Cursed Lax, a Cursed Q Lax that's threatening you, and then boom something else. That's what Eggy tries. Uh, thief, you lead off with Thief. Like, if you're a Thief Mon, you click Thief turn 1 pretty much all the time. This set has to be wary of um, sleeping something and thieving, thieving something, and then getting met with a Tyranitar. In that case, you just explode on it and be like, well, too bad, because you're probably in range of pursuit by then. Because you can't touch Tar. Um, we haven't gone over this Tar yet for a reason. Jinx is the fastest sleeper, other than Gengar. And it mauls teams from turn one. Against Zapdos, if they hit both of their th thunders, you die. If they hit both of your th their thunders. If they miss one, um, so usually you can just Ice Beam turn one. And if Zapdos hits, you switch. It sucks if you get parried. But if Zapdos misses, you Ice Beam again. Don't immediately go to Freeze and Psychic Fishing. Turn, like, off the bat after you sleep something. Uh, be a little more tactful. If you're sub, you can sub on Eggies. Uh, which gives you more insurance in case they're Miracle Berry, which has been popping up. If you're against other Lit Jinx, you can probably go for, like, the Speed Tie sub. If you really can't absorb sleep. But that's not recommended. It, you should root. Jinx forces a lot of different building in where you have to have a sleep talker that you have to have lines into Jinx. Know what how you're absorbing sleep from Jinx. Because if Zapdos is your only sleep talker, you better be prepared to deal with the Zapdos not getting the sleep and not getting slept and Jinx sleeping something else and then messing up your Zapdos. You have to be able to play through that. But that's why Sleep Talk Snorlax is popping up. Like, Sleep Talk Non Curse Lax comes more, uh, is more popular. And 
why Sleep Talk Raikou is like one of the best things about it is that it Sleep Talk it sleep absorbs from Jinx. Uh, Thief Jinx, you just lead off with Thief most of the time. If you see a Zapdos, you probably switch. It's like harder. It's more detrimental to get hit with Thunder immediately. But you can still go for Ice Beam turn 1. Umbreon lead. Click Baton Pass. If you're met with a Sleep lead, switch. But otherwise, you click Baton Pass. Like, seriously. Your lines into Umbreon. As soon as you see Umbreon, send in your Phaser. Or maybe a Sleeper. If you're a Sleeper, if you have a Sleep lead, maybe you consider uh, going for it or attacking the Sleep Talker. You have to respect the play of Mean Look. Turn 1. Otherwise, you lose the game, potentially. Because you get passed to uh, Jolteon, the Agilities, and the Marowak uh, SCs, and you lose. Or Lax Belly Drums, or whatever setup sweeper they have. Just wins. Uh, be, don't try and thunder your way through this mon, uh, and be aware that you might need to hit multiple roars or whirlwinds, because once it sad attacks you, roar and whirlwind are no longer 100% accurate. But usually sending in your phaser uh, is the best thing to start with. Do not get mean look pa trapped turn one on a mon that can't phase itself out, or that can't hurt Jinx, uh, can't hurt Umbreon. Um, that's why Toxic is so good on Umbreon, because, uh, you send in, they send in their Golem to you, or their Tyranitar, and they get toxic and then you Baton Pass out, and you're like, ha, sucks to suck, your Mon is now gonna die pretty soon. He's on a clock forever. He's on a, yeah, it's on a clock. Porygon, uh, you can consider just hitting it. You can just curse up with Lax. You can be aware it's probably gonna paralyze you. And if you really, really like your Protect Zapdos, don't stay in. But if you're Sleep Talk, you can probably just stay in and attack this thing. Against Smeargle, you have to respect Spore. Always assume Spore first, because that is more common than Mean Look. Ideally, that's why Mean Look is so annoying on Smeargle. Um, it's a hard 50-50, but... Yeah, so you try it, the goal with Smeargle, your lines into Smeargle should be try and absorb Spore uh, with your Sleep Talker, and then go to a Phaser, because you don't want it Agility passing all over you, or like, SD passing, or just like passing stuff all over you. You can spin Spikes later, um, be wary of like it possibly Destiny bonding you, and then against Mean Look Smeargle, just like... Do your best. It's smear gold. It's unpredictable. Play the game more and get familiar with your lines and your teams into smear gold. But just have a response. And ideally, if you have a mid ground play on your team that doesn't lose to mean look pass or spider pass, spider web pass, then go for that. Uh, if you're faster, then maybe. Maybe, maybe consider sleeping it. But most of the time, you can just thief it and be fine. Houndoom, you're screwed. Win the 50 50s. Like, seriously, if the Houndoom gets a good lead matchup on you, like, catches your Jinx, Eggy, whatever, your Gengar, if your Jinx, hope you, like, Either switch out turn one. All of these can just switch out turn one. And I think they live. Pursuit. We can check that. Um, Houndoom versus... Oh, if you're Cloyster, don't stay in and spike. Or, well, no. Yeah, just don't stay in and spike. Like, you die to some rolls of Fire Blast Pursuit. Like, just... Oh, yeah, Houndoom can also run Roar, but I think Thief is a little better. Um, versus Jinx. Yeah, so you, yeah, you live, all of these mons live Pursuit. Versus Gengar. Yeah, switching out, you're taking 60 to 7, like 60 to 9, uh, 80 from, so yeah, 
um, your best play is often just switch out and pick your spot and when you're going to come in later and be aware that how to come back later or if you're going to try and double sleep it if you're jinx and trying to win speed ties or something um if you're have a hound doom player it's really hard to say what's better like just to tell you always go for pursuit turn one always go for crunch turn one just probably safe to fire blast into every cloister though it's hound doom if you're leading hound doom you should know what you're doing missy uh don't lead it Seriously, I'm not joking. Don't you don't lead don't lead this mod. Like this set is so much better as a mid game, uh, mid game mod. If you see it, switch your phaser, and it really can't do much to you unless it's thunder in your scarberry, and hope you don't get uh, confusion hacked. And then you can just roar it out, and then you can switch out, and you're fine. Venu, do the exact opposite of what that video did. Sleep absorb with a sleep talker. And if it's like leech seed, then you can switch, switch, switch around it forever. Pretty much. Um, if it's uh, swords dance stuff, then you can probably phase it out or you can just keep attacking it. Like you can just hit it a couple times. Um, just be aware that it has Giga Drain as a potential coverage move. And if it's growth HPI stuff, like. I mean, CLX is probably f pretty fine into this. Norlax is pretty fine into this, even if it's SD. It's not particularly strong. Victor Bell. Just hit it a couple times. Like, same thing, same planet of Venusaur, except Victory Bell does a little more damage to you and takes a lot more and is slower. So you can just, like, more mods can outspeed and sleep this mod. Yeah, if you're a Miracle Berry sleeper, like Miracle Berry Aggie, then just you can sleep these guys. Because you can sleep opposing grass types with uh, sleep powder in this generation. Those are lines into these mons. Now we're going to talk about which ones are like lax by far the most common lead. And then the electrics and then cloister. That's what you're seeing nearly every game. Then most of the other time you're seeing the sleep thief stuff. Very rarely will you see a miracle berry cloister. Rarely you'll see a fori. Um, Eggy is one of the rarer leads. Now, Jinx is pretty common. It's almost as common as a uh, Needle King lead. Umbreon stuff, you know you're in for Baton Pass shenanigans. Where we gone to extremely rare. Smeargle is had a major jump in the viability rankings recently. It's ranked pretty highly now. Just like know your lead, know your reliance into it. But you have to be prepared for this. Hound Doom, you. You don't have to be prepared for this mod at all. No one's going to bring it to you to take you on. Um, same with these guys, the last four. So now we finally go to this mod. This is more of a recent development in the lead metagame. Four attacks Tyranitar. Now this is... I haven't talked a ton about building considerations other than have a sleep talker that can absorb uh, sleep from Jinx. But this Tyranitar needs to be backed up by, an, uh, by a phaser, preferably a normal resistant phaser. You can get away with Whirlwind Zapdos and this thing on the same team. But you usually, like, Celix is often paired by with this, as we've been seeing a lot in GSC Invitational 2 in some of the later rounds. Um, this tar is quite brilliant. I don't know who started it. I first started seeing it in GC Invitational 2. I don't know if it was innovated there, or was innovated in the previous GC Invitational, or just when. When did this thing pop up? I don't know. But it's really quite powerful. Uh, Rock Slide. Thank you. So this tar wins the matchup against Zapdos, barring Rock Slide misses. Um, beat Snorlax, and slams Cloyster. It doesn't like the Sleep Leaves, but you should have a plan into those anyways. Rock Slide is there for Zapdos. Dynamic Punch really sticks it to Snorlax. 
and it does so much, and it murders other Tyranitar. Thunderbolt is for Cloyster. See, Cloyster doesn't kill you with Surf, not even close. Um, but Cloyster can often just spike on you because they're like, "Oh, what does this target do to me?" Rock Slide does like a like a measly forty something percent. And then you T bolt it and do like sixty something, sixty seven ish. And unfortunately, Tyranitar doesn't get Thunder. Otherwise, that'd be a real pair of pair of fusion set, <laughs> pair of fusion flinch set, which would be really really bothersome. Yeah, this that set kind of blows when you miss miss your dynamic punches, but it can also pop off when they get confused a ton and then flinched a ton. Um. But yeah, so you can, you can just decide to. I'm gonna stay in on this cloister and thunderbolt it, then go to your own cloister, and that like their cloister is threat is pressured, it pressures cloister off the bat really hard. It pressures lax off the bat really hard. It pressures zapdos off the bat really hard, and it's just a gr it hits everything so hard in the tier. Nothing really switches into all of this combined except really Steelix, and that doesn't enjoy uh, EQ or dynamic punch. So, that's what this tar is, and I think it is possibly the most interesting uh, new emergence into the GSC landscape that we've seen in a bit. And it shows that this lead metagame is ever evolving. So, this has been the GSC lead metagame overview. I hope this enumeration, uh, helps you understand what the GSC lead metagame is like and which mons on your team should go into your lead slot. But when in doubt, Snorlax can figure it out.